A CNC machine is, at its core, just some metal, motors, and electronics. These items aren't by themselves remarkable, but if you combine them together just right and pair them with thoughtful software, the result becomes a tool that can create nearly anything. This is the magic of manufacturing, using industrial capacity to transform raw materials and inputs into something greater than the sum of its parts. At Carbide3D, we design and build capable CNC machines that anyone can buy, set up, and learn to use. And we do that in the USA, in a town once known as the hardware capital of the world. This is the story of how we manufacture the Shaboko family of CNC routers. Sterling, Illinois, a small town on the northern bank of the Rock River and home to 14 some odd thousand people. There's a long history of manufacturing here, and those roots are evident everywhere you look. This is where the Shapeoko 3 was born over a decade ago, a machine that gave thousands of people their first taste of CNC machining and set the trajectory of Carbide 3D. And Sterling is still where we continue to develop and build our CNC routers today. Though the shop we're in and machines we make look different these days, every Shapeoko that goes out our doors starts life the same way. It always begins with aluminum. Lots and lots of aluminum. It's a strong but easily workable metal that can be had in many different forms. For Shapeoko, the bulk of the machine is made from custom extrusions, which is the most efficient way to use this material. These thick-walled sections allow us to maximize the strength-to-weight ratio of each structural element. Each extrusion is loaded into a vertical machining center to bring it down to an exact size, as well as to add assembly features so, later, things go together precisely. To make a CNC, it takes a bigger CNC. Before anything gets cut, an operator makes sure everything is set up properly. It's no different than how you might double-check how a project is set up on a Shapeoko, except here the stakes are a bit higher. The most powerful spindle we currently offer on a Shapeoko is 3 horsepower. The spindle on a Haas VF4 is 30 horsepower. Not only do we need to make sure the extrusions are absolutely secure, we need to make sure we're clamping the extrusions uniformly so we're not warping or twisting them. The hybrid table extrusions, for example, can't be clamped from the sides. That could cause the aluminum to bow up in the middle. Instead, it needs to be held down from above. For that set of machining operations, we developed a custom fixture with pneumatic clamps to do just that. Every part has different requirements. On this Shapeoko 5 gantry extrusion, the first operation is to spot drill the locations for the threaded holes used when mounting linear rails. That ensures the drill bit that follows this operation won't wander. These holes then get tapped for M4 threads. We'll trim the end of the extrusion so we know it's an exact length, and then, to ensure our linear rails get mounted perfectly parallel, we machine a ledge that the rails rest on and are aligned against. To eliminate extra operations that would waste time if the gantry had to be loaded again and again in different orientations, we use a right angle head to bore out some other holes in the extrusion. The more you can get done with a single press of the cycle start button, the better. After this part is finished in the milling machine, we'll pull it out and stand it up to let all the coolant drain. Another part can run while this one dries. The time between cycles is also perfect for our operators to inspect a previous part and do any touch-up work that's needed. Usually it's just some deburring or tapping. Some extrusions are finished at this stage, ready to be packaged and then put into a machine. Others need some more processing. For example, the gantry on the Shapeoko 5 Pro comes fully assembled, ready for a user to drop onto a frame they've built and wire up. To get the machined extrusion to that point, it goes to another station where someone will add linear motion components and hardware. First, the linear rails are fixed in place at both ends. Then, the assembly technician gets some assistance from a robotic helper. Some of you might be wondering if a modified Shapeoko 5 Pro paired with a screw feeder, suction-based pickup head, and remotely triggered electric screwdriver on a gravity-driven axis is overkill, and I have to admit, it might be possible that's the case here. But, one of the points of feedback we got from our team members was that there's a lot of repetitive labor involved in building these sub-assemblies. And one of the things a CNC is good at is a repetitive task. 
Plus, many of us here are innately curious and like to tinker and solve problems, so an act of glorious redneck engineering like this doesn't just help our employees on the line, they keep the creativity flowing throughout the organization. And this isn't the only place we use our own machines and hardware in the manufacturing process. Here's a Shaboko HDM with part of its table opened up in order to machine the ends of the structure used on the y-axis of a Shaboko HDM. A machine making parts for itself. Kind of poetic. After the assembly of a machine axis, to ensure everything moves smoothly, we'll bench test it by jogging it along its full length of travel dozens of times. And after we confirm that everything is working as expected, the machine components will be boxed up. We're painfully aware of how packages can be handled or mishandled during transit, so we use multiple custom foam inserts to protect the machine's structure, and the largest assemblies are double boxed as insurance. Then all that's left to do is ship these out to customers. Being able to machine and assemble the bulk of our CNC routers in-house has allowed us to keep a close eye on quality and bring down our lead times, all while keeping Shapeoko affordable. Investing in the capabilities to do so much ourselves is something that's been over a decade in the making, ever since we started building the first Shapeoko 3s back in 2014. There's a lot that goes into producing a CNC router and running a successful business that we don't often bring to light. From purchasing machining centers big enough to handle the increasing sizes of our CNC routers, to improving how we pre-assemble parts of the machine to save you time when a Shapeoko shows up on your doorstep, to growing our California-based sales and support team to making education a priority, to ensuring we have spare parts on hand for when things don't go according to plan. These things are all parts of the story behind how we're able to design, make, and ship the entire family of Shapeoko CNC routers from here in Sterling, Illinois. To all of our customers who've stood by us all these years, thank you for choosing us. And to those of you on the fence looking to get into the world of CNC, drop us a line. We're always happy to talk shop and point you in the right direction, even if that might not be a Shapeoko or one of our more compact Nomad CNC milling machines. I hope you found this peek behind the curtain interesting. If you did, let us know in the comments below what else you'd like to see on our channel. There's a lot of fun stories and strange machines we've collected over the years, and with any luck, we'll still be at this in another decade. Good luck and have fun machining, folks. This is Winston for Carbide3D, signing off.